Simba? He's, he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. I really don't want to review this episode. Can we skip this one? I don't want to think about things like Worst Pony, but I guess here we are. God damn it. Don't get me wrong. I love Larson. I dig this episode. It was a really fun one that really what kicked the shit out of the brony image. I mean, that's not what I have issue with, but the issue I think with this one that hits the nail so close on the head a little bit too thoroughly and every time I want to think about it, I want to die. Trauma is magic. Let's talk about the apparent butthurt that many fans experience with this episode. There seems to be an overwhelming complaint that the episode was meant to criticize how nitpicky the fandom can be at certain characters and episodes. And while I respect how a writer might feel that the pressure of a fan base that analyzes every single aspect of the show and spits it back in your face. I mean, poor Larson, can you get a break? Why do you think he's pushing so hard for you to buy his book? He's even writing it in the show now. Clearly this man cannot be stopped. So we start off Twilight just being a bitch with these two chicks. Tula Rula, coconut cream, what are you doing? Because that's Twilight. She has a stick up her ass, but it came with the wings, so whatever. It's like surgically there. Whoa, that was really good. You gotta work on it a little though. Why? Because from here it sounded like it came out of my ass. <laughs> now I have somewhere to put my stick. <laughs> Also, look at this child. It's another 3G pony that they got stuck in there. I'm watching you, 3G pony. Why does this one have a tail that's like different? Like, I expect the show people to do some decent matching or something. Mm, color theorying, no. Did she have a tragic painting accident that caused her tail to become a different color? I mean, her cutie mark is a paintbrush, so I'm going with it. Twilight gets the bright idea to sell the journal that they all wrote two seasons ago. Well, I would have figured being a princess, she would have gotten like tax break or something. Like, how does that castle like pay its electricity bill in water? I saw water that one time. Oh, I know it's there. This is going to turn into one of those videos where we analyze the questionnaire economy and no one cares about that. So everyone leaves and goes home. Especially the editor. The editor dies for our sins, people. And turns out that's a good idea. I mean, everyone seems to be interested until we realize that everyone is a brony. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, buying books for the wrong reason? Friendship sure is magic. So, what did you think of the lessons? Oh, we haven't read them. These are keepsakes. We gotta keep them in mint condition. <laughs> oh. This escalates to where people are having fights about who is best pony and Rarity's in tears. Get it? Because Rarity is like people's most favorite pony. But in this episode, she's the least famous. It's like people hearing everything they believe and jumping to conclusions might be a bad idea or something. The opposite thing happens to Applejack because vice versa, she's considered the least appealing of the main six and now everyone can't get enough of her. In the midst of this, Fluttershy also gets called out. We wanna know why Fluttershy keeps learning the same thing over and over again. Be a serious- Well, we know! <laughs> How do <did> you know? <laughs> we'll talk about this more later, I promise. This escalates to an angry mob, and while the ponies figure out what to do, we have the return of mismatched pony and friend or whatever. And to counter Twilight's point, I kind of disagree with how people choose to handle stuff like this. Sure, you can laugh it off, but if people are affecting your business, coming to your property or like harassing you, then I think it's hard to control how you react or again, how you emotionally handle this kind of thing. I mean, if a kid is being bullied and causing himself self-harm, is it really his fault for how he handled the situation or is it the fault of who's bullying him? Choosing ignorance for what might happen to someone isn't really excused for going and being a dick. Think about it. Well, that got dark. So the horses sing about how they're full of flaws, that's okay. It's seriously a good episode of Moral, but I have to wonder if these characters will ever be done with learning those lessons over and over and over again. And how do they get the crowd to go away? Like this episode never addresses that at all. Good job changing addresses there, Applejack. So the basic episode is this. Twilight was better before she got wings. On an analytical note, is this episode meant to counter how nitpicky fans can be? 
I'm all in favor for having these characters feel like real people or horses or whatever. Like us, it may take a few times before a lesson really takes shape and sinks in. No one is perfect and that's okay. I think what the reviewers point in all this is how these consistencies don't really match together. For example, we know Fluttershy learns a similar lesson over and over, but let's more explore why this happens. From a real world perspective, how a writing studio works is that the head writer assigns script concepts for a bunch of other people, and they all write scripts at the same time. So little tidbits like lessons carrying over from episode to episode, especially within a season, it's kind of hard to do. We don't hate the characters for being flawed, we sometimes just fault the show for its lack of consistency with implying these episodes. Episode. Knowing the above though and thinking about just how much My Little Pony content is made, including Equestria Girls, it's hard for any group to keep track of it all, unless you're like the team behind the new Star Wars continuity, poor Disney. On a personal level, this episode struck a chord with me, a very painful one that's caused a lot of real life issues unfortunately. So I'll keep it brief, but what I will say to everyone who knows the real me, thank you for your support. For people who feel the need to shit on me because I'm a girl, or that I do YouTube videos, or for other reasons, go educate yourself. There's some videos at the bottom of the description for that. In second, fuck off. I'm compossible. Thanks for sticking around for those who do. You're the ones who matter. I'm KP, and thanks for the support. And that's all, folks, except it's not time for the ending gag. <laughs> こんな古い木の扉なんて簡単に破られるだろうな。Fuck this shit, I'm out.